It's All in My Head, My Journey with ADHD, presented by Charlie Parker, Alley Camp 2021. We'd like to thank our gold sponsors Telstra and Intopia, our silver sponsors ANZ and Coles, and our bronze sponsor How To. It's All in My Head, My Continued Journey with Adult ADHD, a personal journey of ADHD presented via irreverent humour, memes, anecdotes, and interpretive dance. Alley Camp 2021. Charlie Parker, Digital Accessibility Consultant. Tweet at Intopia. Firstly, before I begin, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which I live and work, the Ghana people, and pay my respects to their elders past, present, and emerging. And I extend that respect to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples viewing this presentation. Secondly, for anyone who came here today specifically for the interpretive dance, I lied, there is no interpretive dance. But you're here now, so you may as well keep watching. My name is Charlie Parker. You might know me from that project that I never quite finished, that deadline that I missed, or that conversation that I totally forgot that we had. My name is Charlie Parker, and I have ADHD. No, really, it's a thing. I got diagnosed for the first time in my 30s, but looking back, it was always there. Pre-diagnosis, it was just called laziness or forgetfulness or not living up to my potential. Because when I was a kid, ADHD didn't exist. Well, it did, but if it did, it was only in boys. And it wasn't a condition, it was just bad parenting. And it didn't exist in girls. And it definitely didn't exist in my house. In my house, we didn't believe in ADHD, depression, or even mental health issues. In my house, there was only try harder. So why am I sitting here today telling all of you about this? Well, for one, oversharing is actually a common trait of ADHD. But also, there's been a dramatic increase in the diagnosis of ADHD in adults recently. And based on anecdotal evidence, the number of my friends who get the hashtag me too's when I post relatable memes, there could be quite a few of you who might be wondering about yourselves. Today, I'm going to be talking about ADHD in general, what some of the key indicators are. I'll throw in a few statistics to show that I'm legitimate, but mostly it will just be stories about me based on memes that I find far too relatable. And regrettably, as mentioned, no interpretive dance. Before I continue, I want to make something very clear. I am not a doctor. I never even played one on television. So I have zero qualifications in giving medical advice or diagnosis. The stories and opinions shared are mine and based on my experiences with ADHD. These experiences will not be true for everyone. But if after hearing my stories, you think things are far too relatable and you'd like to know more, I'll link some resources at the end of my presentation. I need to wash my towels. Oh, wait, I need to put those clothes wait, in the finish dryer. Brushing your teeth, bro. Clothes need to go in dryer now. Eat. I will forget. Laundry. What was I doing? Oh, yeah, brushing my teeth. Wait, was I? Where's my toothbrush? Oh yeah, I spit at kitchen sink. Why was I near the kitchen sink? Rocking. Toothbrush. What did I want to do? Why did I leave the bathroom? Dryer. If your internal dialogue runs something like this, you might have ADHD. But stick around because there's lots more to learn. ADHD stands for Attention, Deficit, Hyperactivity, 
disorder. It's a developmental impairment of the brain's executive function. It's not a behavioral disorder or the outcome of bad parenting. It's not a mental illness or a specific learning disability. It's an impairment in the brain's self-management and self-regulatory systems. There are three recognized types of ADHD, inattentive, hyperactive impulsive, and combined. Meaning a person has a mixture of symptoms, including hyperactivity, inattention, and impulsivity. I won the ADHD lottery and I got the combined presentation. The most commonly recognized symptoms are being inattentive, hyperactive, and impulsive. Inattention gets me every time. Have you ever done the thing where you're watching a show and then you miss something important so you go back and then you miss it again because you're back at looking at your phone so you go back and then you miss it again because you're back looking at your phone? Just me? Inattention is often described as making careless mistakes. Our mistakes aren't careless. Most people with ADHD do really care about the mistakes that they make. It's just that we can't place our focus where you need it to be at the time. Hyperactivity. Hyperactivity isn't just boys bouncing off the walls. It can manifest in many different ways. Hyperactivity can be fidgeting, twisting, or getting up to pee five times in a 30 minute meeting. I'm pretty sure that of all of the medical conditions that my former colleagues were mentally diagnosing me with when I kept getting up and leaving long meetings for bathroom breaks, it was never ADHD. It can also be internal. Our brains are spinning through 45,000 creative ideas, building empires and making it really difficult to focus on the task at hand. And impulsivity. Impulsivity can be interrupting conversations. We're not trying to be rude. Sometimes we just get so excited that the words jump out of our mouths or we have to say something right at that moment before the thought is lost forever. Acting without much consideration for the consequences. You know that little alarm that goes off in your head and makes you question if you should be doing something? Yeah, we don't have that. Or if we do, it's defective or we just ignore it. So for me, I married a man that I met on the internet. The internet. No, not Tinder, not an app. We met before apps were invented. We met in a chat room when people used avatars. He was Canadian and I did not know what this man actually looked like until we met in person when I picked him up from Melbourne Airport. Side note, he did not look like his avatar. And I still married him. Further side note, it did not end well. People with ADHD are twice as likely as neurotypical people to divorce. I've been divorced twice. Yay, statistics. Symptoms of ADHD can also include sensitivity to light or sound, being unable to read social cues, auditory processing disorders, time blindness, and not being able to do things for no apparent reason. ADHD affects one in every 20 Australians. It's theorised that it's more common in boys than girls and that about a quarter of children grow out of it. I say theorise because there is so much about ADHD that is still unknown. Like I said, when I was a kid, it barely existed. And I'm old, but I'm not that old. A neurotypical brain looks like this. There's the frontal lobe, the temporal lobe, the occipital lobe, and the lobe that starts with P that I can't pronounce, so I'm not even going to try. My brain looks like this. An obstinate two-year-old who doesn't give a flying frog cake about what my priorities, needs, or requirements may be at any given moment. 
And my job on this earth is to appease and entertain the tiny overlord and try to accomplish at least something of merit on any given day to stop my life turning into a complete dumpster fire. Sounds simple enough. But if you have ever tried to put a pair of shoes on a toddler or try to strap them into a car seat when they didn't want to go where you needed to go, you'll have some idea of what my life's like on a daily basis. ADHD, single player hide and seek. We all lose our keys sometimes. Recently, the BBC in the UK ran an article and had a segment on their breakfast show regarding the difficulty women have with getting an ADHD diagnosis due to misinformation and stereotypes. At the end of the segment, the anchor finished the story by stating, hm, we all lose our keys sometimes. One of the most difficult and frustrating things about having ADHD is that most of the traits are regularly experienced by neurotypical people which is why I think it's so hard for ADHD to be taken seriously. Because most of the traits of adult ADHD just look like we're just bad at adulting. And if we just tried harder, maybe things would be easier and we'd cause less disruption to our own lives and to those around us. But it's not that simple. For people with ADHD, our brains work differently. The pathways and receptors have a different structure and there's something about neurotransmitters. I don't know. Like I said, I'm not a doctor. But it's not just about having one of those days. It's about having 365 of them. So when someone says to me that everyone experiences what I do, my response is along the lines of, sure, you lose your phone, but do you misplace it six times a day, day after day, no matter what you do? despite all of your systems costing you hours of time, didn't think so. Or if you do, hey, welcome to the club. And it's not just small things like glasses, phones, and keys. This week, I lost my mop. Yep, a mop for cleaning floors. A mop isn't small. It's not like it could have slipped down the back of the couch cushions, though I haven't actually looked there. And my house isn't that large. Logically, there are only so many places that a mop could be. And I have checked all of them and still no mop. But how, I hear you wonder. Well, easily apparently. If I don't make a specific mental note of where I put something, it disappears as if by magic. And sometimes making a mental note isn't even helpful. Sometimes I can put something in a special place and I may as well have thrown it into a void. This week, I lost three pairs of glasses. I have six just for these occasions and my external keyboard to my laptop. Before I was diagnosed with ADHD, I just thought that I was a useless human. And yes, that does have a negative effect on your self-esteem, thanks for asking. I was that person who never had my life together. I was intelligent, I was capable. I'd been seen several times doing the exact thing that I'm now claiming that I can't do. And apparently using the reason my brain is a toddler and it needs a nap, is not an excuse that anyone is going to buy. ADHD is struggle with everyday life tasks, menial things that no one likes to do. So it's difficult for people to understand that you not doing them isn't a choice. Things like falling asleep at a decent hour. I have always said that I was born in the wrong hemisphere. I struggle to stay awake during daylight hours but can easily stay up all night. That is when my brain is most active. That's when my ideas are popping. Remembering what I was saying. I've been giving presentations and stopped mid-sentence and only realized that I was the one that was meant to be talking because everybody in the room was just looking at me. 
quite often I'll say something and someone will miss what I've said and immediately ask me to repeat it. And my response is, I'm sorry, I forgot. That was a long time ago. And they'll give me a weird look or think I'm just being a jerk because they missed it the first time and I'm somehow punishing them. But honestly, I really did forget. Emptying the back seat of my car. I'm sure we all know someone whose car looks like they live in it. Having said that, not cleaning your car can save your life. Recently, I had to get a COVID test. I jumped in my car, expecting to be away from home for about 40 minutes to an hour. I was there for six hours. I didn't take, think to take drinks or snacks because I wasn't expecting to be away from home for that long. And I also have ADHD. After about four hours of sitting in line in my car, not having eaten breakfast, I started to go through the items on my back seat and I found a handbag. This was the handbag that I'd taken to a birthday party sometime since buying my car about five years ago and sitting in my car at that moment. And inside the handbag was a cookie. It was a beautiful cellophane wrapped commemorative birthday cookie. And yes, not only did I eat the cookie, I washed it down with a bottle of water that I found under the passenger seat. Survival. In my defense, it said, eat me. So I'll take that as a win. Another win with ADHD can be hyperfocus. I will literally put off small but necessary tasks for weeks on end because they are hard. The other day, I was cleaning out my office and I found a package that I was meant to post to a friend a year ago. I'll blame COVID. But I will also drop everything and spend 14 hours straight doing something 100%, 50% unnecessary and highly involved that no one asked for without stopping, without taking a single break at all. ADHD is, as Sir Winston Churchill said, an enigma wrapped in a paradox and shrouded in a conundrum. Time. Time is an illusion, a man-made construct that seeped into the very fabric of how society operates. People with ADHD were not cut from this cloth. I'm sure we've all heard that punctuality displays a person's respect for people and time and that if you're late, then apparently you don't value the other person's time or you consider your time more important than that of other people's. For people with ADHD, this is a myth. Our inability to perceive or understand or calculate time is one of the biggest problems that we have and one of the least often discussed traits of ADHD. Dr. Russell Barkley, a clinical scientist, educator, and practitioner, describes ADHD as having temporal myopia, literal nearsightedness to time. We only have a concept of the time in front of us. If we have a deadline that is in the future, it is out of our field of vision. We can't see it. Even now, doing this presentation, my brain knows that the presentation will actually be played next week. So it's having trouble wondering why I'm trying to finish, in, finish it now, recording it ahead of time. ADHD is, to summarize it in a single phrase, time blindness. People with ADHD cannot deal with time. And that includes looking back, to look ahead, to get ready for what's coming at you. 
So the individual with ADHD is kind of living in the now. And wherever the now goes, they are being pulled along by the nose, wherever it goes. I'll give you an example from our adults clinic. It's uh, rather funny, but it wasn't to his wife. This couple came into our office in Massachusetts once, and she said, let me tell you what it's like living with this guy, because it's like having a fourth child, actually. This is what happened last weekend. She says, if you can't do something about this, I'm leaving him. Here's what happened. He went out to mow the yard. He wheeled the lawnmower out of the garage, and the tank was empty. So he reached for the fuel can. It was empty, too. So he threw it in the back of the Ford Explorer and headed down to the little quickie mart. And while he was filling up the gas can, his buddy pulls in in his Ford Explorer and says, you know it's opening day on the trout stream. What do you say we go fish a little bit? And so the guy hops in his buddy's Explorer, and they go fly fishing. <laughs> and they are out for six hours. And then they get thirsty and decide to stop off at a pub for a beer. So now they're at the little local tavern. This is a true story, by the way, because within an hour, the state police had found his car still running in an open gas can at the quick <laughs> And he finally wandered home at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Do you see what happens? It doesn't matter what your plans were, what your goals were. The now is more compelling than the information you're holding in mind. And you will get pulled along by the now. I have a 30 to 45 minute commute to work every morning. Which some people, especially those who live in big cities, would think was pretty reasonable except for the fact that I work from home. My office is literally downstairs from where I wake up in the morning and I still struggle to get to work on time. So do I have ADHD? Well, I do, but do you? Is there a chance that finding my ADHD memes and stories relatable and in an indicator that you have ADHD? Potentially. As mentioned, ADHD can mimic many regular, sometimes traits of every general neurotypical human. For it to be categorized as ADHD, the symptoms must have been present prior to the age of 12 and must cause significant disruption to your life. As a child, I just thought I had an annoying personality. I didn't fit in. I asked too many questions and mostly at inappropriate times. To my parents and teachers, I was hard work. However, there is also a chance that you are actually neurotypical, living in a world that is behaving like it has ADHD. We now have stimuli coming at us 24 seven. There's no break for our brains. There's always something new to grab our attention. Everything is split in 45 different ways at any given time. So it's very difficult to focus on or to complete a task. Essentially, you've trained your brain to function as if it has ADHD, to take things in very, very short spans of attention. If you recall a time where you had your life together, you used to be able to focus and only in most recent times, the last five years or so, things seem to be falling apart. Or your experience of ADHD symptoms coincided with a major and often traumatic life event. For example, a divorce, losing a job, losing a loved one, or a global pandemic happening and everything we know of the world seemingly or actually changing overnight. You might just be experiencing acute symptoms of what ADHD has felt all along. If that's the case, try making some changes in how you break up your day. Do a digital detox and reclaim your life. If, however, you are like me and have always had shit but never had it together, then maybe yes, you could be undiagnosed ADHD especially if things have gotten worse in the recent past. To people with ADHD, the world has always been hectic, even back in the day when it wasn't. Funnily enough, when the world gets ADHD, it doesn't make things easier on us. It makes it twice as hard. It's like spinning in the opposite direction of the earth at warp speed. So does this mean you should get diagnosed? Not necessarily. 
you are more than your diagnosis. If you are really struggling, then yes. Because even if it's not ADHD, it's worth talking to someone. Never be afraid to reach out and ask for help. But if you're just curious or because you've noticed some traits but aren't really feeling like you need intervention or medication, then maybe a diagnosis isn't necessary. Just treat yourself as if you do have ADHD. Put some things in place that people with ADHD do to make their lives easier. Use alarms, timers, reminders. The best ones are the ones that you only have to set up once. Get an accountability buddy, someone you can rely on who can keep you on track, remind you of things and who won't judge you. Like a service dog who's a person. Finding out that I had ADHD was a huge relief. I wasn't just a useless human. I had a disorder. Finding out that generally most people don't believe in it is hard. So far, I've been diagnosed twice. And even though actual people who went to school and got pieces of paper to say that they are experts in the brain stuff have told me twice now that I have ADHD, my mum still makes that face when I mention it in front of her. Close family and friends can even shrug it off with a <laughs> yeah, same attitude when I tell them that my ADHD is inhibiting me from doing the thing. And previously, I rarely mentioned it anywhere that I worked. Or if I did, I just jokingly shrug it off when other people did. Because I didn't want to be labelled or looked at like I was making excuses. I did used to roll up every morning with two giant cans of Red Bull cracking the first one about 8.45 a.m. and the second by 9.15 a.m. and called it my liquid focus. And I was apparently okay with being known as the weird chick with the caffeine addiction because at least that was tangible to people. When I was first diagnosed, I decided not to take medication. I was just so relieved to find out that I wasn't just bad at adulting and that there was an actual reason why I was the way that I was. At that time, for me, putting strategies in place like a hook to hang my keys on and apparently self-medicating with copious amounts of caffeine was enough. Now, 15 years or so down the track, that's no longer enough for me. And for me to function at the capacity that I want and need to, I'm at a point where I'm looking to go on medication. To do this, I need to be re-diagnosed. I did get referred to another non-specialising psychiatrist earlier this year, and after his assessment of me, he did indeed confirm that I had ADHD. But in his opinion, I was better off on antidepressants. Spoiler alert, I was not better off on antidepressants. Getting diagnosed is difficult, especially if you do have ADHD. Firstly, because you have to make an appointment. Most people I know who got diagnosed were seeing their doctor for something totally non-related, usually something more urgent that required them to see a doctor. Because generally for people with ADHD, we don't make those types of appointments unless there is an actual urgency. Like, I severed my thumb and need stitches, but while I'm here, I've been experiencing these symptoms. But that is only the first hurdle. Once you speak to your GP, you'll be referred to a psychiatrist. In Adelaide, where I live, there are only two psychiatrists that specialize in adult ADHD. And as you can imagine, they are very busy. So I've been referred to an interstate telehealth service. This was a much shorter wait. I was referred back in August and my appointments are next week. Yes, there are two appointments. An assist initial assessment part one and an initial assessment part two. Usually they space them out a bit, but because mine is a reconfirmation diagnosis rather than an initial diagnosis, I think they've pushed it closer for me. The appointments cost just over $1,000 in total. And even though there's about a $600 rebate available through Medicare in Australia, Getting diagnosed can be financially 
prohibitive to many people. And this is why I say if ADHD isn't affecting your life so negatively that you feel that you maybe do need to be medicated, then going and putting strategies in place might be the cheaper option. But let's assume you've managed to get an appointment. You've saved your money and you're good to go. What next? Well, the first thing they'll make you do is complete a DIVA 5, a 20-page diagnostic interview for ADHD. It's almost like a trap. If I can complete this form, does that mean that I don't have ADHD? Spoiler alert, I have my appointments next week and I am yet to fill out this form. I can't talk about what it's like to take medication for my ADHD because I'm not there yet. I don't think it'll be a cure and I don't want a cure. ADHD is part of my DNA, literally. But if it can help keep me on track and quiet the bees in my head, then that'll be worth it. Working so hard to get your brain to do the things you need to do to function at a level that is on par with neurotypical people, the baseline normal, is exhausting. I've been at this a long time and I'm tired. But being an ADHD isn't all bad. If you do have it, you'll find yourself in some pretty good company. Albert Einstein, Robin Williams, Wookie Goldberg, Michael Jordan, Walt Disney, and Emma Watson, and many more. And if none of this resonates, but you want to know how to be a better ally, understand that ADHD is real. It's not made up. It's not an excuse for antisocial behavior. Don't shame people for choosing to medicate. How someone treats their ADHD and what works for them is a personal choice. Don't shame people for choosing not to medicate. How someone treats their ADHD and what works for them is a personal choice. Don't treat symptoms as character flaws. There is already so much shame around the failings attached with having ADHD. Just understand it is a condition. And remember it's a spectrum. How it presents in each person on each given day at each given moment will vary. Now, I am so blessed and I understand that Alley Camp is not an Intopia centric event, but I would be remiss if I didn't take a moment to thank my three directors, Sarah, Stuart and Adam, for giving me such a safe and healthy work environment and for helping to set me up for success. And to all of my colleagues, for taking my ADHD seriously, accepting me as I am, and understanding that sometimes I'll drop the ball and not holding it against me, and celebrating the good days. Take my hand and come with me. I want to teach you about ADHD. I need you to know I want to explain. I have a very different brain. Sights, sounds, and thoughts collide. What to do first? I can't decide. Please understand, I'm not to blame. I just can't process things the same. This is an excerpt by a poem by Andrea Chesterman Smith about ADHD from a child's point of view. It's called Take My Hand and you can look for the full poem on the internet. I posted the full poem on my Facebook page a while back and my beautiful friend Carmen responded with this. Take my hand and stand by me. We will change the world. Just wait and see. Our spectrum minds are a gift, you see. Having ADHD does have many gifts. Creativity, empathy, tenacity. We are problem solvers. We are brainstormers and thought leaders. The way our brains operate are just mismatched to the society that we live in. There are many really good resources out there about ADHD, but most are aimed at the parents of children with ADHD. But here are a few for adults. Firstly, there's an article that I wrote that and published on Medium. Now, this presentation is called My Continued Journey with ADHD because apparently I already wrote an article and called it My Journey with ADHD. It's just that I forgot that that's what I'd called it. There's a Facebook group called Jen Has ADHD, which is a really good community. There's a lot of really great information and some really cool memes that are shared there too. 
and how to ADHD with Jessica, Jessica McCabe on YouTube is also a fantastic channel. There's an ADHD adult symptoms test that you can take at attitude.attitudemag.com um, attitude and see if maybe some of the symptoms do align with having ADHD. And cite to you, which is the telehealth service that I was referred to. There's currently a five to six week wait for cite to you, but if you're like me and live in a place where you can't access a, an ADHD um, specializing psychiatrist, then maybe that's an option. But if you are wanting to look into ADHD, start by talking with your GP. And if you'd like to reach out or have any further questions, you can reach me at charlie.parker at intopia.digital or find me on LinkedIn at Charlie Parker. And that's Charlie, C-H-A-R-L-I-I. And for those people who came for the interpretive dance but stayed for the memes, this one's for you. My brain, when I try to remember anything important. fantastic alley camp thank you for sticking with me and please if you have any questions or um, you want to find out more please reach out to me have a great day bye alley camp 2021